of time when Atlantis was said to be around 11,600 years ago prior to its destruction up until about 5,000 years ago. So going back to my point, like a lot of people see the Sahara Desert and they don't realize that this place was unbelievably different than it is today. And one of the things that's so important is that I know some people listening will, you know, they hear Atlantis, they think, oh, it didn't exist. Right. Whether it existed or not, the the evidence that we're going to chat about today to show you that there is conclusive evidence, I would say, that catastrophic water erosion that the ocean had blasted through the Sahara tens of millions of years more recently than previously known. According to the science, 56 to 66 million years ago was the time of the Trans-Saharan Seaway, which was the last time the ocean blasted through it. However, there are a few lines of evidence that say otherwise. Besides the fact that anyone that looks at the Sahara Desert on through you know the Google Earth app, you can see fluvial striations, which is signature traits of water erosion. This is com- uh, confirmed by other experts that look into these things. Uh, as far like, I like to mention Randall Carlson, mm-hmm. um, he's someone that's analyzed the area and has said, yes, this is catastrophic water erosion. Um, but so one of the signature lines of evidence that suggests that the ocean blasted through it far more recently was the largest volcano in, in Sahara, Africa, is in Chad. Um, it's Mount Kusi, and um, there is a lava flow that goes through it that is dated at 12,000 or so years ago. The volcano itself is supposed to be somewhere between 1.2 and 2.3 million years ago. But if you look at Mount Kusi to the south, you can see, and I don't know, Jamie, if you're able to bring up one of the photos of, of that mountain chain, but you can see that the water erosion cuts off that lava flow directly to the south. Yeah, keep going over. A little bit right there. Okay, so go over a couple. That is the mountain, and you can see those striations, which are signature traits of water erosion. All those white blemishes are salt, and I should point out real quick that it is a confirmed fact that much of the Sahara it has surface-level salt. And you see those white blemishes on that mountain? That is not clouds. That is not snow. Those are salt deposits. And surface-level salt that would have been from the ocean? That is what I That is what I suggest, because in the middle of that caldera, you have huge patches of salt, and is it reasonable to suggest that that salt existed before that the creation of that volcano? Because it seems to me that all that molten, that salt would burn up. Right. And, the, and, and not only that, there is scientific studies that show that there are gastropods, which are sea life, that existed inside that caldera that used to be a thousand feet deep and dried up just a few thousand years ago. So the fact that this is an 11,000 foot volcano that has salt on top of it, I would say is corresponding evidence that the ocean had once went through it. And if you go over a couple more images, Jamie, you will see far better uh, images that show you that. Okay, so notice how it cuts off. You see yeah. to the black right here? That, that is a lava flow that's dated around 12,000 or so years ago. And regardless of whether the volcano or that water erosion happened 12,000 years ago or 2 million years ago, that in itself is evidence that the ocean blasted through the Sahara Desert literally 50 to 60 million years more recently than previously known. And the implications of this as far as climate science, as far as uh, the topic of geology and cataclysms cannot be overstated. I mean, does it not look like that that water or excuse me, that lava flow was cut off by whatever type of erosion that is? Does it? I mean, that's yeah, completely. Yeah, it's it's such a clean line, and it, it it aligns with all the water erosion marks that are to the left of it. Can you make that smaller, Jamie? Can you make it stretch it out? Yeah, and so, nothing. It's just like you you could really clearly see that it looks like a line, like a water line, pass through what was uh, marked by the volcanic eruption. And this is one thing I say, I'm like, it's it's visible to anyone that has eyes to see, but it turns out that the Sahara Desert is one of the least studied places on Earth, mostly because it's so inhospitable. It's an average of 125 degrees Fahrenheit much of the year. It is so unbelievably big that just to get out there, I mean, you need reliable aircraft or vehicles. There is most of the countries out there are, I regret to say, third world in that you just don't have supplies. It's not feasible to just travel out there with a whole team at, at, on a whim. So most, mm. most of it is essentially undocumented, and it's not a site – the Sahara as a whole isn't a site that gets much attention, unfortunately. 